good morning good morning dear children so from try to territory we have completed uh, today we are going through the important points then one video i am uh, uh, going to present after this okay then if we get time question answer session also there because that day only seven questions uh, uh, when are conducted right so remaining is there first important see first part aurangasib what he say i am the last mughal emperor right that picture should be there in your mind okay then who is this vasco da gama i am portuguese explorer discovered the sea route to india interesting right then about aurangzeb the last mughal emperor he established control over a very large part of the territory that is now known as india you are getting important points if you need you can note it down or you wish you just listen that that also enough already we studied from the textbook important points again i prepared like this you just go through that is i think that is good for you after his death in 1707 many mughal governors and big zamindars began asserting their authority and establishing regional kingdom as powerful regional kingdom emerged in various part of india delhi could no longer function as an effective center that introductory part already we know by the second half of the 18th century a new power was emerging on the political horizon that is the british east india company comes east that map also you can go through i can give assignment part like this what and all the territories uh, <coughs> that you have to just go through 1600 east india company acquired a charter from the ruler of england queen elizabeth i granting it a sole right to trade with the east this meant that no other trading group in england could compete with east india company are getting right mercantile trading companies in those days made profit primarily by excluding competition so that they could buy cheap and sell dear the first english ship sailed down the west coast of africa round the cape of good hope and crossed the <coughs> see vasco da gama portuguese explorer discovered the sea route to india in which year 1498 these are all very important for one mark question 1498 then east india company begins trade in bengal The first English factory was set near the banks of River Hooghly in 1651. Already we underlined that part, that and all in our, in our textbook. The same. Uh, it was the base from which the company traders, known at that time as factors, the factory had a warehouse where the goods for export were stored, and it had offices where company officials sat. Then by 1696, it began to building forts around the settlements. Two years later, it bribed Mughal officials into giving the company zamindari that right over three villages. One of these was Calcutta, that is later uh, known as Calcutta. See next. Next we got Farman. What is the meaning of Farman? that granted the company the right to trade duty free but the officials were asked to pay duty on private trade
then how trade led to battles this is very important topic the strongest rulers nawabs of bengal murshid kuli khan aliwardi khan siraj daula the early 18th century the conflicts between the company and the nawabs of bengal intensified after the death of aurangzeb the bengal nawabs asserted their power and autonomy as other regional power were doing that time okay murshid kuli khan was followed by aliwardi khan and then siraj daula as the nawab of bengal each one of them was a strong ruler okay that order murshid murshid kuli khan aliwardi khan and siraj daula you can take mass m4 murshid kuli khan a4 aliwardi khan s4 siraj daula mass ms then what we learned the nawab they nawab the nawabs refused to grant the company concessions demand of large tribute for the company's right to trade denied it any right to mint coins and stop it from extending its fortification the company was also convinced that to expand trade it had to enlarge its settlement and buy up villages and rebuilding forts the conflicts led to the famous battle of plassey in which year 1757 next important year 1757 don't forget 1757 see british defeated siraj daula with the help of mir zafar mir zafar okay j mir zafar this battle led the foundation of british empire in india after the death of aliwardi khan siraj daula became the nawab of bengal the company was worried about his power and keen on a puppet ruler who would willingly give trade concession and other privileges an infuriated siraj daula asked the company see underline part already we underline stop meddling in the political affairs of his domination stop fortification and pay the revenues after negotiations failed the nawab sent 30000 soldiers to the english factory captured the english officials logged the warehouse blocked the english ships like a story you can take okay the british army was vastly outnumbered consisting of 800 europeans and 2200 indians the nawab had an army of about 50000 the british general next important robert clive he bribed the nawab's uncle and chief of army who is that mir jafar one of the uh, commander who controlled the artillery and much of the army what was the result the result was siraj daula was deserted by the best troops in his army and the british easily defeated those who remained loyal the battle that causes the battle of plassey 1757 that uh, date full you have to study on june 23 1757 this is considered to be start of british rule in india then this and all if you get time just note it down battle of plassey was the most decisive war that marked the initiate uh, initiation of british rule in india for the next two centuries next battle of plassey or palashi took place between british east india company and nawab of bengal and his french allies 
then that uh, the battle occurred June 3rd, 23rd, 1757 at Palashi of Murshidabad district on the bank of Bhagiradi River. Murshidabad, Siraj Daula, the army commander Mirjafar, not is that okay, J. Mirjafar of Siraj Daula side betrayed in the Battle of Plassey and thereby the whole force of Nawab collapsed and as a consequence the entire province of Bengal came under the British. Then it is also known as Battle of Plassey is also known as Battle of Palashi. Already we learned just go through. Then what we studied that uh, company officials become Nabobs. This B is there okay. After the Battle of Plassey, the actual Nawabs of Bengal were forced to give land and was sums of money as personal gift to the company officials. Then Robert... <laughs> Robert Clive himself amassed a few fortune in India. See, at the age of 18, he came to Madras. When he left India, his Indian fortune was, see, this word, pound, how much is coming, 401 and 102, 4 lakh, 1102 pound, He's, he became rich like that and all. When he was appointed as the governor of Bengal in 1764, what is the importance of the year 1764? Battle of Baksar, right? He was asked to remove corruption in company administration, but he was himself cross examined in 1772 by the British Parliament which was suspicious of vast wealth. Although he was acquitted, he committed suicide in 1774. I think you feel like a story, right? Then, Tipu Sultan, the tiger of Mysore also known as uh, Tipu Sultan, uh, also known as Tiger of Mysore, was the ruler of Kingdom of Mysore from 1782 to 1799 and a scholar, soldier and poet. He was the eldest son of Hyderali and his wife Fatima. That only just, that's, you know, Tipu promoted a more widespread use of Hindustani language in southern India. Then Maratha War, that year is important. The first Anglo-Maratha War, 1775 to 1782. It's the first of the three Anglo-Maratha Wars fought between the British East India Company and Maratha Empire in India. The war began with Treaty of Surat and ended with the Treaty of Saibai. Okay, then the third Anglo-Maratha War, that year, 1817 to 1880, 18, was the final and decisive conflict between the British East India Company and the Maratha Empire in India. The war left the company to control most of India. It began with an inversion of the Maratha territory. One second, huh? say Paramount C. Already we underlined our textbook. Doctrine of Labs was initiated by Lord Dalhousie. Okay. Then we studied. Just go through that is enough. You don't worry about this and all. Okay. Uh, this we can take. Doctrine of Labs was an accession policy that uh, by Dalhousie, who was the Governor General for the East India Company between 1848 and 1856. Okay. Then this part is very important. The company took over the princely states of Satara, that year is important, 1848. 18, next year, 
Jai, uh, Jaipur and Sambalpur, Nagpur and Jansi 1854, Tanjur and Arkad 1855 and Aut 1856. Okay, it's very important that year and princely states. Subsidiary alliance was initiated by Wellesley, introduced by Wellesley, 1798 to 1805. Okay. Then we studied subsidiary alliance that principles and all. Then, okay, the company army, just go through, okay. Then we can watch a video related to this lesson. Reassertion of rights by the Nawabs. You will be able to list the steps taken by the Nawabs of Bengal to control the East India Company's expanding stronghold. In 1707, after the death of Aurangzeb, the Mughal Empire was split into regional kingdoms, each ruled by a governor or Nawab. Murshid Khuli Khan was the Nawab of Bengal region after Aurangzeb's death. His government and the succeeding Bengal governments refused to grant the concessions earlier given to the East India Company and demanded large fees if the company wanted to carry on trade. They also stopped the company from extending its fortification and minting its coins. The local rulers demanded that the company officials pay their taxes. They accused the company of undermining the authority of the Nawab by writing disrespectful letters and humiliating the Nawab and his officials. Ali Vardi Khan, the Nawab succeeding Murshid Kuli Khan, and Siraj ud Dawla, his successor in 1756, too, felt the same. We have learned that after the death of Aurangzeb in 1707, the Mughal Empire was split into regional kingdoms. Each regional kingdom was ruled by a governor or Nawab. The Nawabs of Bengal, Murshid Khuli Khan, Ali Vardi Khan and Siraj ud Dawla demanded large fees from the East India Company to carry on trade and also demanded that the company officials pay taxes. They also stopped the company from minting coins and extending their fortification. Expansion of the company rule in the 19th century. You will be able to describe how the northwest provinces of India were conquered by the East India Company. Describe the policies adopted by the company to annex the remaining Indian states. Lord Hastings served as the Governor General of India from 1813 to 1823. He followed diplomatic, political and economic methods to acquire territories rather than violence. He initiated a new policy called Paramountcy, under which the East India Company was proclaimed to be supreme or paramount. It therefore claimed to have greater power than the Indian states. This policy gave the company the power to annex any Indian state it felt threatened by. Thus, a number of Indian states were annexed. But the queen of a small Indian state of Kittur refused to accept the annexure of her territory. Rani Channamma of Kittur resisted the British army till she was captured in 1824. She was jailed and later died in prison in 1829. By the later part of 1830, most Indian territories had come under the British rule. 
Only a few pockets in mainland India and the regions of northwest of India, heavily influenced by the Russians, continued to elude the British. To conquer these regions, the British waged a war with Afghanistan from 1838 to 1842. It then established its indirect rule in Afghanistan and conquered Sindh in 1843. Only Punjab could not be captured by the British army for as long as Maharaja Ranjit Singh ruled. After his death in 1839, two wars were fought between the Punjab and British armies. The first war ended with part of Punjab being annexed by the British. And the second war in 1849 resulted in Punjab being completely taken over by the British. The last of the independent Indian states were taken over by the new annexation policy called Doctrine of Lapse, devised by Lord Dalhousie. According to this policy, if an Indian king died without a male heir, his kingdom would lapse and it would come under British rule thereafter. And so the Indian states of Satara in 1848 Sambalpur in 1850, Udaipur in 1852, Nagpur in 1853, Jhansi in 1854, and the remaining part of Awadh in 1856 were annexed. Thus the traders who came to India in 1600 AD to trade took just over 250 years to become its supreme ruler. We have learned that that northwest provinces of India were conquered through wars. Lord Hastings initiated a policy called Paramountcy under which the East India Company was proclaimed to be supreme or paramount. Lord Dalhousie implemented the doctrine of lapse policy under which Indian states without a male heir ceased to exist. Satara Sambalpur, Udaipur, Nagpur, Chansi and remaining parts of Awadh were annexed by the company. By 1856, the East India Company that came to India as a trader became its ruler. Mysore Wars You will be able to Describe how the Mysore Empire came under the East India Company's rule. Mysore and its surrounding territories were traditionally ruled by the Wadayar family. Hyder Ali was a commander of Mysore army. He extended the Mysore Kingdom's domain and became the de facto ruler of Mysore from 1761 to 1782. His son, Tipu Sultan, known as the Tiger of Mysore, ruled Mysore from 1782 till his death in 1799. Both of them opposed the British. They got support from the French. And fought the Marathas, Nizam of Hyderabad and the British. Hyder Ali won the first war for Mysore in the year 1769 and expanded Mysore Empire. After his death in 1782, his son Tipu led the Mysore forces and expanded their territory further after the second war fought between 1780 and 1784. He modernized his army with the help of the French. 
disallowed local merchants from trading with the East India Company and also stopped the export of sandalwood, pepper and cardamom through the ports of Mysore Kingdom. This resulted in a loss of revenue for the company which used the Malabar coast for its export of pepper and cardamom. As Tipu Sultan posed a threat to the company's growth, it declared war on him. This third war resulted in the defeat of Tipu Sultan's army and a treaty being signed by Tipu to hand over half of his territories to the company. Fourth War that resulted in the ultimate victory of the East India Company over Tipu. He was killed while trying to defend his capital, Seringapatna. Mysore was handed back to the Wuryar dynasty after imposing a subsidiary alliance on it. We have learned that, that Hyder Ali, the commander of Mysore army, became its de facto ruler. He and his son Tipu Sultan opposed the East India Company. They prevented the East India Company from trading through the Malabar coast. Four wars took place between the Mysore and East India Company troops. The fourth war resulted in the death of Tipu Sultan. Mysore was handed back to the Wodeyar dynasty with subsidiary alliance imposed on it. Conquest of the Marathas You will be able to describe how the Maratha empire came under the company rule. The Maratha empire extended over most of the Indian territory in the 18th century. It was divided into small states ruled by different chiefs. These chiefs called Sardars were responsible for the administration, finance and defense of the regions under their rule. They belonged to different dynasties and members of the same dynasty became the subsequent chiefs. Some of the famous dynasties of the Maratha Empire were the Sindhya, Holkar, Gaikwad and Bhonsle clans. These Sardars were held together in alliance by a principal minister called the Peshwa. The Sardars acted on the orders of the Peshwa, who was the real administrative and defense head of the Maratha Empire. Some of the famous Sardars were Mahadji Sindhya and Nana Fadnis, who were also brave soldiers. It took the East India Company three wars to conquer the Marathas. The first war took place in 1782 and ended with the Treaty of Salvai with no clear victory. The second war was fought from 1803 to 1805 after which the company gained Orissa and the territories north of the Yamuna including Agra and Delhi. The third war between the British and the Marathas took place between 1817 and 1819. It was after this war that the British gained complete control over the remaining Maratha Empire which included the territories south of the Vindhyas. The Peshwa was ousted and sent away to Bitur with a pension. We have learned that the first Anglo-Maratha war in 1782 AD ended with the Treaty of Salbai with no clear victor. The second war fought from 1803 to 1805 ended with the company gaining Orissa and the territories north of the Yamuna including Agra and Delhi. 
The Third Anglo-Maratha War, fought from 1817 to 1819, resulted in the British completely taking over the entire Maratha Empire, including the territories south of the Vindhyas.